remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Back with you once again, and over the last couple of weeks, conservatives have received a lot of criticism for supposedly risking a government shutdown in an attempt to defund Obamacare. And even as I uh, tape this right now, as I uh, speak to you uh, at this moment, over in Washington, Texas Senator Ted Cruz is on the floor of the Senate uh, undergoing a filibuster as we speak uh, to that end, and, and God bless Ted Cruz for doing so. It seems to be one of the few times we see anymore that an elected leader, a legislator, actually stands on principle. And he's getting all kinds of flack for it, not only from the Democrats, but uh, from some Republicans as well. But I say he's doing the right thing. I'm proud of him for doing it. I just said on Twitter a few moments ago that right now, as we speak, the American people are speaking to Washington through Senator Ted Cruz. So when it comes to this criticism of supposedly risking a government shutdown in an attempt to defund Obamacare, I have to tell you that I am in favor of those tactics. Let's be clear, Obamacare is not just some random mundane piece of legislation. This is not some transportation bill or highway bill or any of the other things that we always see get passed over in Washington. This is big, this is huge. This is, as Joe Biden said himself, a big fucking deal. Pardon my French. Obamacare is an, a transformative entitlement program. And those of you who have watched this show at all over the last two years, you've heard me talk about entitlement spending and entitlement programs, and you are familiar, those of you whom I have taught over the last couple of years, you are familiar with the mathematical fact that entitlement spending or mandatory spending, as it's sometimes called, is the single biggest factor in the debt problems that we face today. Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and now Obamacare will be joining those three things unless we can defund it and stop it. And let's go back into history just a little bit. Let's give you some historical perspective for why what the Ted Cruz's and the Rand Paul's of the world are doing is so important. Let's go back to the days when Social Security was first passed back in the 40s. FDR got that in there. Well, a few years later, the early 50s, 1952, the Republicans took back over the White House in the form of Dwight Eisenhower. And at that point, Eisenhower and Republicans in Congress had the opportunity to defund Social Security or to dismantle Social Security or to get rid of it in any number of ways. They chose not to do so. The Republican Party of that era, quite frankly, failed in that regard. In fact, if you go all the way back to 1952, the front runner for the GOP nomination was a guy named Robert Taft. You may not know of him, you may not have heard very much about him in your textbooks, but he was a conservative Republican, and among the many things he talked about, he talked about the dangers of Social Security. Well, moderate Republicans and liberal Republicans, and yes, there was such a thing back in those days, they got together and, and they rushed Dwight Eisenhower out there at the 11th hour at the convention and took the nomination away from him. And back in those days, you could do those kind of things at a political convention. You can't really do it now, but back then... Presidential nominations weren't uh, set up by primaries and caucuses as the, the main driving factor. Another story for another time, but that's the, the backstory for all of this. So Dwight Eisenhower and the Republicans in the 1950s did not go after Social Security. In fact, they girded it. Fast forward to 2013, what's the result? We are in debt up to our eyeballs, largely because Social Security was not killed off in the 1950s when it could have been. Well, the Ted Cruz's of the world, the Rand Paul's of the world, and if I might humbly say so, the Travis Cook's of the world have learned from that lesson of history. We know that at least in large part, the failure of the Republicans in the 1950s is the reason, or a lot of the reason, we are in the financial pickle we are in today. But that being acknowledged, is it worth risking a government shutdown for the lofty goal of defunding Obamacare? I would say that yes, it is. Because Obamacare is that big. It's the fourth entitlement program. And we can't even afford the three entitlement programs we've already got. And think about it. As we stand here in 2013, government tries to do far too much. I think most of us would agree on that. And they take far too much of our money in order to attempt to do so. When you really stop and think about it, 
We actually need the government for very little. We don't need the federal government to intervene in very many areas of our lives whatsoever. And I've said it all along on this show. Yes, we have a spending problem in this country, something that I think most politicians would agree with. But you've got to take it a step further. We not only have a spending problem, we have a government problem. It's not simply enough to cut spending. We've got to cut government. In fact, I've said before, and I will repeat it until I go to the grave, that even if we did not have the financial issues we have right now, it would still be worth our while to cut spending and cut government and cut government influence from our lives in every possible way we could. Now, some people, even within our own party, would forecast dire economic consequences if the government were to get shut down. Well, I will acknowledge that that would be the case in the short term. No doubt about it. I'm not going to pretend that it wouldn't. Yes, there would be some suffering in the short term. But what would that suffering tell us? What would be the lesson we should take from that? What would that be an indicator of? What the short-term economic suffering would tell us is that we as a society over the last hundred years have attached far too much of our economic well-being to the public sector. And for us to have a healthy economy in the long term, we must get that eco those economic areas out of the public sector and back into the private sector, back into the free market where they belong. And that short-term suffering would be the first step towards doing so. Let me give you an example, something you can, uh, something you, you can relate this to. Think of a heroin addict. And if you knew of a heroin addict and he said, you know, th this, this, this heroin has got a hold on me, I can't escape, I've got to kick this habit. I've got to get rehab. I've got to get off this stuff. Would you say to that person, well, if you quit heroin, if you, if you detox off of heroin, you're going to go through some withdrawals, and they're going to be bad. They're going to be unpleasant. So, you know, if I were you, I'd, I'd just stay on that heroin. Hell no, you wouldn't say that. That would be the most asinine thing you could say to that person. But that's the very choice we're confronted with right now. If we were to shut down the government, would there be some withdrawals? Yes. But there are withdrawals that, frankly, our nation needs to go through in an economic sense in order to get the long-term ship righted. Now, given the choice between defunding Ob Obamacare and shutting down the government, well, if I had my druthers, I'd just as soon do both, to be honest about it. You guys know I'm against the idea of raising the debt ceiling in any circumstance. We've talked about that before. Every time the debt ceilings come up, as I said earlier, we don't have a revenue problem. We have a government problem. You stop funding the government, you stop feeding the beast, the beast dies. Or at least gets a lot thinner. So you're going to have a real hard time convincing me that avoiding a government shutdown is a positive thing. You're going to have a real hard time convincing me that it's worthwhile to continue funding this government in its current state. Let me be clear. Government needs to be practically starved to death. And we as a society need to go into a little bit of rehab from the dangerous drug that is the federal government. We need to go through those withdrawal pains. So if we're at a question of does the attempt to defund Obamacare risk a government shutdown, my answer to you would be what kind of risk is that? That's, that's the worst thing that could happen is if we shut down the government? Hell, bring it on! And God bless the Ted Cruz's and the Rand Paul's of the world. And shame on you Republicans that are obstructing. We will remember you at primary time. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We will see you next time.